Okay. Hello and welcome. My name is Liz Stewart. I am president of the New Jersey Shade Tree Federation, but really I'm just a student of trees and um, a licensed tree expert, but I am a student of trees. That's really what it comes down to. And I'm here with Pam Zipsy. Hello. I'm the vice president of the New Jersey Shade Tree Federation this year, also a lifelong student of trees. And we're, uh, I guess, we're supposed to do a little bio, right? Is that what you did? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> so I work for the Rutgers Urban Forestry Program as the outreach coordinator. And so I, I partner with you know, the New Jersey Forest Service and other you know, agencies within New Jersey to kind of connect what Rutgers is doing to what the Forest Service is doing and to all of the volunteers in the communities that are uh, working on managing their tree resource. So I try to bring all those things together. So Pam is a really good person to know. Thank you, that's a kind <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Um, so we were gonna do just a little like back and forth of Q&A, get to know us. Yeah, this is our first, first interview. I think if you saw our last video, we kind of introduced the Shade Tree Federation website and told you we were gonna start interviewing uh, the board members to introduce them to the membership and so this is our first our first attempt and since liz is the president uh, she will answer the first question so i will ask the first question so liz yeah. what is a typical day like for you in your tree roll in my tree roll so i actually i'm also disclaimer i'm also a veterinary technician so that's my main gig. Um, I do house calls for pets, mostly in palliative care and hospice care, but I worked emergency and critical care for 29 years. So because I did that job, I worked nights and I had my days free. So I, I am a lifelong student of trees also. And I started learning and I had really good mentors that somehow got me to this point. So for trees, my main role, I would say now I volunteer my LTE services to my town. Um, I would say I answer about almost 300 resident question, like concerns through the town about street trees. Um, I help organize the tree planting yearly, um, you know, all that stuff involved in tree um, urban arboriculture. And then I help a few towns in the community um, also with their, with their trees, their street trees and questions and things like that. That's, that's very cool, Liz. It's fun. It's, it's nice having the, the pets and the trees thing. And yeah, kind of goes together. It kind of goes together, yeah. Nature theme. Yep, yep. All right. So um, let's see. I will start with you with what advice would you give to people, I guess maybe like students or communities maybe because you work with a lot of communities. What advice would you give to communities um, in their tree programs? Or what do you see as being? Yeah. So my, my favorite advice is don't give up. And I think um, it can be hard work volunteering for your tree program, right? I'm constantly amazed by what volunteers are able to accomplish. Like even what you're doing, you, you <laughs> got your license, tree expert license, and you, you volunteer with that. And that's amazing. And I'm always just constantly amazed by what volunteers are able to do. But I mean, I do get a lot of phone calls from frustrated people who are just hitting a wall and it happens and you're not alone and don't give up. Yeah. Things are coming. That's, that's, uh, that's my favorite piece of advice is that you're doing amazing things and, and keep, keep trying. That's great to hear actually, because um, it is, it's a lot of work. I don't, I don't know. Why, sometimes I don't know why I do, but then I think about it's important to have trees in our communities and I'll go upstate and see like, that like miles and miles of trees. I'm like, there are plenty of trees in the world, but they're not by us. Actually, this morning, I just read um, a study. I think it was, I don't know if it was Germany, how important street trees are in our community and, the, and how it reduces um, the need for people to take anxiety, anti-anxiety medication. Like, yeah. I mean, it's important. So that's what keeps me going. And I have really good people on our shade tree commission um, Jennifer, who's on it with me, she does all the finances. I mean, and she answers all the phone calls and then, and then put, gives them to me. 
and then I'll put them out to, you know, and our other members have all their little roles. So we all do something, yeah. but all our combined volunteer hours come out to save the town a whole, like a hired position. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing what, what Shade Tree Commission volunteers are doing throughout the state. Yeah. It's really inspiring. Yeah. And then it's fun. I get to connect with industry people and even like the utilities and prof other professionals. And um, there's a really good community of people. So. Good. All right. Yeah. Very cool. So, so Liz, I have a question for you now. Yes. Um, what is your favorite resource? Like, where do you like to go for information about trees? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I go to my mentors. Um, there are a lot of publications. Yeah, Google, Google can be good for that. Actually, I don't think Google is great for pet advice. <laughs> it makes <laughs> me panic. But for trees, I think it can be a really good resource and educational tool. And I think the Shade Tree Federation, the conferences, that's what really got me hooked in the beginning. But my mentors, uh, I mean, yep. they're just such a good base of knowledge. Um, um, I think we'll but, meet some of both of our mentors in these future interviews. Yes, I think I imagine. Paul Cowie's coming up. He's one of my big ones. Bill Comrie, yeah. who's a standard in the industry. Ted Skowinski, um, who does a lot of education. Um, and then just people through Rutgers and people like yourself, you know, when I've seen you talk, it's just all of those people. It's, it's inspiring. It is. And the, the community, uh, thank you again for your kind words, yeah. but the community, like I remember, Liz, I remember you and I met at core training like 20 years ago Yes. when I was new at the forest service teaching core training and you and Jen and your changer commission were taking core training. I remember meeting you there and, and being so like excited by the energy of the community that you can build by attending those conferences and, and getting that education and talking to mentors. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, and there's actually an urban forestry course by uh, Kuzer. Um, yep. Yeah, so that was one of the things. I think Steve Kristoff with the, um, I think he still runs the Rutgers, the, um, is it? Plant, ide plant identification, I think. Yeah. So he's learning all the Latin names and I loved it. I mean, I was such a geek. I think he would look at me and be like, oh, <laughs> that girl's crazy, but I loved it, you know? And I think it's important to learn the Latin names and the real names for things. I think Ted is someone who taught me that you, you call things by their name and you don't dumb it down. And it's, it's not hard. It's not, it's yeah. like learning anything else. Yeah, yeah. So I am going to ask you, um, let's see if, oh, I like this. If you could be a tree or what is your favorite tree, whether that be like just a species of tree or a favorite tree that you walk by every day or pass by or think about, or that you've met in the past. <laughs> I love the idea of meeting a tree yeah. because you do, right? And that there are like individuals that have a like a, a little place in my heart for like I as far as I mean we get the like what's your favorite tree species a lot and I, I can't answer it I have like a top 10 list that is a rotating list of like 20 species yeah but I was thinking about the trees on campus around um, where I worked on campus when I was working on campus I've been working from home for you know a long time now <laughs> like a lot of us have. And there was this um, Meta Sequoia. I know the one. <laughs> Don Redwood, right on Passion Puddle. That is just a gorgeous tree. And I, I miss being able to see that tree, um, you know, on my way to work every day. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I miss that tree. Yeah. So it's cool. interesting. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you with having a list of trees and like, you know, yeah, there are so many trees that I love, like the bit, like oaks as a general thing, or like the meta sequoias, any kind of thing like that. Um, I think the one, when, you, when I asked you that question, the one thing that came to mind is the one tree that I refuse to plant in town is the tree lilac. And I, I feel bad saying, but I think it's a bush. I think it's a shrub on a stick. <laughs> I don't feel bad saying that. Is that's, that wrong? That's fair. Okay. Because I don't yeah. think it's a tree, really. I would disagree. Are I think there's a, oh, really? a tree form. Tree form, still not a tree. I'm going to get hate mail for that. Um, No, there <laughs> should be no hate mail. Okay. Everyone has a different... I remember getting into like all these conversations about gink whether ginkgo is a good shade tree. 
oh, right? Because like, the leaves are ginkgo is one of my favorites. It's always on in the top, you know, rotating list of favorite trees. I love ginkgo, but some people, you know, feel like too much seed comes through the sparse leaves, and it's not a shade tree. And I would disagree, but it yeah, and it's important. Diversity is good, and we have yeah. you know different feelings about different trees. And it's such a unique tree with its leaves and the big buds that you can see from a mile away and the fruit and the leaves. I actually make medicine. I have a big really? thing making medicine from trees like wow. Hawthorne, but the leaves, you know, the fruit are one. I think people know about ginkgo from the fruit. You can, you can it, roast the seeds, but it is a it smelling. It smells bad. It, it's, oh, it does, <laughs> but it's good for your brain. Um, but the leaves you can make, and that doesn't smell and you can make a oh. medicine from the leaves, which is interesting. I, so it's useful. I did not know that. Yeah, and it does, you know, I have two in front of my house that I'm looking at. Um, they provide shade. I'm sure that I'm, I'm on the, the Ginkgo camp side, so. Good, good, good. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get hate mail for that too, because. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Discussion's <laughs> good. Um, okay, so Liz, what is your biggest tree pet peeve? <laughs> Let's see which one. Um, it's between, I know it's, I was going to say stapling signs and nailing signs on trees, but at least people see a use for a tree in that situation. I think it's mulch. I think it's the mulch. Mm. And I've actually made videos to post just on my own, like Facebook and stuff where I actually go through rescuing trees and I carry a spade in the back of my trunk. And if I see a tree and I have time to stop, I will rescue a tree from a mulch pile at the risk of being arrested for being a weirdo. That's but yeah, I think that's a big, um, I, I just, I feel like the landscapers are just not getting the message. I think the tree people know. Yeah, that's um, a crazy thing. I feel like for 20, my whole career, 20 years, 20 plus years, I've been talking about multiple volcanoes and it just isn't getting better. So. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe we need to get in touch with the, we need to get a thing with the landscape people. That might be the. Yeah direction but yeah I think that's my biggest pet peeve I feel like oh that tree is just not gonna live a full potential that's a good one yeah how about you <laughs> um planting without plans for future maintenance like I think young tree structural pruning yeah. is just such a important and smart investment and I think it gets overlooked you know because budgets are tight and you know you have to spend your pruning budget on more imminent dangerous problems than, than the young trees that aren't really posing a risk. But if you can prune them when they're young yeah. to improve their structure, then you can avoid that structural failure risk in the future, so. Yeah, you know, that might be a good um, conference kind of web, whatever, like hands-on thing. Cause I, I remember when I first started, that's something we would do as volunteers. Yeah, I would it's get a DPW you truck. As yeah, well. yeah, that's an easy one because it's low risk. I would get a DPW truck; they'd give it to me for the day, and um, we would go out and just. I know, <laughs> crazy, and they would, <laughs> and we would just prune the, the younger trees, you know. And that's yeah. a great, you know what? That's a really great point. I think people can do that, and then you're outside and you're doing something, especially in these times. That's something we can all do. And, and it's one of those things you put a little effort in early in the tree's life, and it can make such a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Well, I think, you know, we wanted to keep these kind of short. Do you have anything? I don't no, have any I, burning questions. I don't, I don't. I think that, you know, this has been fun and we can probably keep chatting for a long time, but and no one will want to watch these. So we should wrap it up. So to be continued. Yes. Um, and we have a YouTube channel starting. So subscribe to it and you'll get notifications when we put up new videos. They will, um, in an email blast, we'll be sending out an email blast when new ones come out. So you can yep. keep up to date on that or check back on the website. They'll be posted to the Shade Tree Federation website where we have all the contact information also. Um, and you all probably know Donna and we will get back to you if you have questions or ideas for- yeah things that you want to see. So next we'll have uh, two or so more board members to introduce. So we hope you'll watch again. Great. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye. See you later, Pam. See you, Liz.